speed ramping is one of those things that when you do it right, it just looks incredible. However, if speed ramping isn't done right, it's just gonna look bad and ultimately make your videos look worse. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know about speed ramping to make your videos look so much better. All of that stuff and more coming up. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. So I'm gonna be breaking this video up into three sections. What is speed ramping? How the heck do you do it? And when and when not to use speed ramping. So starting with the first one, what is speed ramping? Speed ramping is slightly different than just retiming a clip because it involves the gradual ramping up or down of the speed of the clip so that it's not a jarring 100% to 400% over a one frame time. So what we do is spread out that speed change so it's less abrupt and more smooth. So the three most commonly used types of speed ramping is the speed up, the ramp slow motion, and the speed ramp transition. So now that you have an idea of what the heck speed ramping is, the next question is how the heck do you do it? So, uh step into my office. On my timeline, you can see that I have my clip right here. Now, by the way, if you wanna follow along or test your skills, you can download the footage via a link in the description for free. Just remember to type in zero at the checkout and it is all yours. But if you love what I'm doing and you want to join with me in creating better content for this channel, then any amount you choose goes directly into creating higher quality videos. So the first thing we're gonna go over is the speed up effect. So to make that ramp speed up effect, what we'll do is find the place in our clip where we want the beginning of this effect to happen and put your playhead on it. Then right click on your clip and go to retime controls. Now you see that our speed actually pops up right here. So right next to it, hit this drop down arrow and go to add speed point. Now you'll see there's a speed point added right at the beginning of our clip. Then move forward and find the place where you want this effect to end. And once again, add a speed point on it. Now to speed up this section of the clip, we can hit this drop down arrow right here and go to change speed. And then we can bring it up to any of these speeds right here. Or what I like to do is grab this top speed point right here and drag it in like this. Now if we watch it through, you can see that it literally sucks. Like it, it, it's bad. It's really, really bad. Now to make this a lot smoother, what we're gonna do is right click and go to retime curves right here. Now click on this drop down arrow and uncheck retime frame and check retime speed. So now you can see that that is not smooth at all. And we love smooth, my friends. We love smooth. So to make this a lot smoother, we're gonna click on these points right here and hit the smooth button and do the same thing for our other speed point. Now, if we click on these speed points right here, you can see that our handles pop up. And if I just zoom in right here, I can really refine just how much of a speed ramp I really have. So now if I watch this all the way through, it's a lot smoother. However, if you wanna change the beginning position of our speed ramp, you can actually click this bottom tab right here and drag it over like so. So the second thing we're gonna go over is the ramp slow motion effect. For this clip, I want the slow motion speed ramp to happen right here as they throw their jackets over the shoulder. Find where the beginning of that coat throw happens. Go to retime controls and select add speed point. Then move forward and find the place where you want the slow motion speed ramp to end. And then once again, hit the drop down arrow and hit add speed point. Go ahead and grab this top tab like this and you can see that our speed is actually changing. If you're using a 24 frames per second timeline and you shot your footage in 60 frames per second, you can slow it all the way down to 40% without any loss of quality at all. If you shot at 120 frames per second, you can literally go down to like 20% of normal speed. So, and if you shot at 24 frames per second and you're using a 24 frames per second timeline, I'm sorry. That's where optical flow comes in, my friends. So now if we go back and watch it, you can see that the slow motion part just happens. It's like out of nowhere. We wanna make sure that our time change is actually smooth because if we don't do that, we're literally not doing a speed ramp. So we'll right click on our clip and go to retime curve. And then under retime frame, we'll hit the drop down arrow and uncheck retime frame and check retime speed. 
So now we can see our actual change in speed and yeah, clearly there is no smooth speed ramp. So to make it, we're gonna click on the speed point right here and hit this smooth button and do the same thing for the other one. So now on our speed point, you can see that we have these handles right here where we can adjust just how smooth or not smooth our speed ramp is. So when we watch our clip, you can see that there's actually a really nice speed ramp now. But if your footage looks super choppy and gross, what you can do is in the inspector tab, you can go to retime and scale Scaling. And under retime process, you can hit the drop down arrow and go to optical flow. Then under motion estimation, you can hit enhance better or speed warp. Speed warp just takes a lot more computing power. So I tend to do enhanced better. So optical flow should just make your footage a lot smoother. Now let's move on to the speed ramp transition. So on my timeline, I have two clips right here, and you'll see that on both of these clips, the camera is moving backwards away from the people. Now we can use this motion to our advantage to create a speed ramp transition. So just like with the slow motion and the speed up, what we'll do is right click and go to retime controls, and then add a speed point when we want the beginning of this effect to start. But the difference is that we're not gonna create an ending point on this clip. What we'll do is grab the top blue tab right here and drag it in a lot closer to really speed up this last section right here. So now on our second clip, we'll actually add our ending point. So we'll pull up the retime controls and we'll find the place where we want this transition to end and add a speed point there. Now speed up the beginning of the second clip like this and now bring both of the clips together. Now finally, pull up our retime curves and turn on retime speed. Now click on the point and smooth it out and create a speed ramp and then go to the second clip and do the same exact thing. So once you've finally done that, you have created the speed ramp transition. Well, now you may be asking yourself, Billy, well, that's all good and stuff. I know how to make a speed ramp, but when the heck should I use it? And more importantly, when shouldn't I use it? Don't worry, I got you. The speed up effect or fast forward effect is used to bridge the gap between two important parts of the same clip. You wanna use this on like longer clips where you're like walking through crowds or doing stuff like that. Say you're at a wedding or an event. You can also use the speed up effect as a time-lapse tool, but unlike time-lapse, you'll actually still have the possibility to slow it back down in case there's like a funny moment or something like that. Now, most likely you won't wanna use this effect when you have somebody walking because honestly, they look super goofy like penguins. And the speed ramp transition is used to hide the cuts between two different clips by using speed, as long as they're moving the same direction. Otherwise, if they're not going in the same direction, just don't do it. It's gonna look bad. You'll wanna use the ramp slow motion effect to draw the attention of your viewer to a certain action or a detail or something like that it's really hard to see with your normal eye. If you slow it down, you can see it a lot better. You can use it also to focus in on emotions like at a wedding or at a concert. Now you'll most likely not want to use this over excessive because honestly with all the YouTube filmmakers out there, it's kind of an overdone effect of like this slow motion speed ramp. You don't wanna use the ramp slow motion for things that are not important. You don't wanna randomly focus on something that doesn't help you build your story. Another thing you can do with all of these effects is have your footage flow with your song because of the speed ramping. This one done right sounds so awesome. Now, honestly, there's not a certain type of video that you will or won't want to use, but when you use these, make sure there's a purpose for it. Otherwise, you're just throwing random flashy effects in videos, and honestly, people don't care as much anymore. So use speed ramping to help you tell a story. All right, so there you have it. Everything that you should know about speed ramping. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can learn more about speed ramping. Do you have a really cool tip about speed ramping or do you know a place where you should or shouldn't use speed ramping that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, if you want more videos like this, click on the top for a playlist with all of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials or click on the bottom for a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.